on this journey Get lost in my mistakes What looks to me like weakness Is a canvas for your strength And my story isn't over My story's just begun And failure won't define me Cause that's what my father does Yeah, failure won't define me Cause that's what my father does
somebody help me bless the Lord in his house tonight. Amen. Let's give him some praise and glory. Anybody glad to be in his house tonight? Amen. Amen. How many of you enjoyed the service this morning? Hallelujah. What a joy it is to be here tonight gathering in to worship in his house and to give him the praise and the glory and the honor. That is due. God is good. All the time. Amen. God blessed anybody today. Amen. Amen. Let's stand to our feet at this time. Lift up our hands in the house of God and pray together. Father, we worship you in spirit and in truth. I thank you, King of kings and Lord of lords, that you've allowed us to gather in this house. God, I want to thank you for your mercy and grace tonight. And Father, I pray you'd just move in on this place. Old time, old fashioned power of God would just rest upon this house tonight. God, I pray you'd get glory. I pray you'd get honor. I pray you'd get praise in this house. And Father, tonight in all that you do, we're going to thank you for it and give you the praise for it. Because we love you, Jesus. Yes. You saved our soul from hell. You've written our <laughs> name down in you. heaven. And we glorify you. We ask it in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. If you love Him, praise Him one more time. Amen. Remain standing with us and Brother Philip's going to come and lead us in worship. Brother Philip. Amen. Bless you. <laughs> Boy, I'll tell you what, after that, glory well, to be the same, folks. Amen. I already feel the Lord. He's Amen. Glad to be Amen. Glad Amen. Here. Yep. Amen. Good. Good to be here. Good to see everyone. We're glad to have each of you, each of you with us. It's, it's just a privilege to worship with you. And I uh, want everyone to get them a hymnal. And uh, we're going to sing just some old familiar songs. Everyone ought to know. Okay, let's turn over to page 676. Heaven's Jubilee. Psalm, we'll sing one and three. <clears throat> 676. songs and the joking in a little bit but uh, they've got the parts in them I, I love the parts and, and love to hear the ladies come in on and this is a song uh, we all should uh, desire this I want to know more about my Lord Amen. Amen. I haven't, I, I haven't I'm getting old and gray but I still haven't I still want to know more Amen. one day one day I'll know him and he is known Amen. Oh, Amen Okay, 459. I don't want to get started. 459. Let's say one and three. One Keep and three. going. <laughs>
Until the Lord takes over. Yeah. Yeah. When the Lord Bless takes over, Lord. I don't care how many mistakes I make. It's going to be all right. I had one picked up. Brother Andy suggested that, and I was glad. So, uh, you pray for me tonight. God's the best thing that's ever happened. So you pray tonight as I sing. <laughs> so long you was right when I was wrong I can't repay all the love you give on me You'd have me be. 
heard the best thing that's ever happened to me. Praise the Lord. I want to say this before I sit down. I thank the Lord for saving me many, many years ago. and uh, He's just been so good to me. I mean, I've, he's seen me through a lot of things and tragedies. I lost a daughter nine years ago. Hardest thing I've ever been through is to lose my daughter. But you know what? The Lord's always there for me. Amen. I live alone, but I'm not alone. The Lord's there with me. I'll tell you what, many of us sometimes, sometimes, people uh, come through, they say, well, that woman's lost her mind. That's okay. I know who I serve. I know who I serve. Thank you. Amen. Somebody praise the Lord this evening. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. All right. Brother Josh, Melissa, Tasha is going to come sing a couple songs for us tonight. You Bless pray them. for them. Bless them. Bless them, Father. <laughs> Bless them. can't tell Sister Ruth ever gets nervous.
bless me. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Blessed. Ephesians 
6 verse 16. Ephesians 6 verse 16. My Bible says above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all of the fiery darts of the wicked. Amen. Above all. Now if you go back and you look, he's been, I didn't know how in the world I was going to preach tonight after all that this morning. But hallelujah. I, then butterflies are starting to get in formation tonight. I thank God. But hallelujah. If you look at the first parts of, the, of that armor that they put on this morning, they went in to the battle with that armor already on, didn't they? Yeah. They'd already put on their shoes. They'd already put on that belt. And they'd already put on that breastplate. Yeah. But there was some things that was left off Come until on, it was ready for the battle, Royce. Yeah. Until it was ready for the battle. Yeah. They had a shield that they had to come up. They had a helmet. And these boys will tell you about the helmet here in just a few minutes. And about the sword that they take. But glory to God, I get to tell you about the shield. <laughs> Can I tell you that shield that is said? And the first thing that I want to tell you that is an action that had to take place. Whenever they went into the battle, as they went in, like I said, they already had everything else on, but there was the shield that they had to take up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There was an action uh, that they had to do, was take it up, pick it, make a physical something that's coming on, uh, that they had to pick it up. Now you imagine, <laughs> glory to God. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> That old shield that was laying there ready for the battle. And as it was sitting there uh, waiting yeah, for, uh, to be picked up, if that old soldier would have come along and said, well, I don't need that shield. I don't need that faith. I don't need this about this old God or anything. I'm just going to leave it laying there. Listen, as long as that shield is there dead on the floor and uh, flat down, it ain't going to do nobody any good. Amen. Too many people today are leaving their faith on the floor ready for the devil to come along and destroy us where we're at. Amen. Amen. Glory, it's feeling good this evening. That shield don't do any good until you come along and you're ready to start into the fight, into the battle. And you pick it up. Yeah, come on, brother. Yeah. Church tonight, we need to be challenged to pick it up. Pick it up and go forward. Mm, my glory. Hallelujah. Let me come on. Hang on just a little bit. I'm just going to lay it right there. But that shield, if you look at that shield as they come along, that shield looked like a door in a way, didn't it? Now, if you go in, and I'm not that smart or anything, I just found this out, you know, looked it up. But if you look up the Greek for that shield, the Greek word was thureos. Thureos. Now, you go back to the root of that word, thureos, and you get thura. Well, that doesn't mean very much to very many people, but thura meant the door. <laughs> In my research, as I started looking up, <laughs> glory to God. <laughs> What they would do in the old days, in the ancient days, when they suspected that the enemy was coming to come to their house and to steal, kill, and destroy just like the thief wants to do tonight, amen. They would take a big stone and they would roll it in front of the door and they would make themselves a shield. <laughs> Andy ain't got time to talk about rolling stones tonight. Hey, man, glory, hallelujah. But that stone at the door, they put it there so the enemy, whenever they throw their rocks or they throw their spears or they shoot their arrows, it hit that rock and it bounce off. <laughs> Roman soldiers... They couldn't pick up a stone, could they? It's too big. 
It just wasn't, wasn't in the maintenance for them to pick up a big stone. But can I tell you what they would pick up? They would pick up a shield. That shield. Oh, you, you got to get this tonight. Please get this. But that shield was made out of two pieces of wood. <laughs> Anybody get this tonight? <laughs> that shield was made out of two pieces of wood. That shield was glued together. <laughs> and then it was covered with leather. That old Scudum Romano. It was about 40 inches tall by about 30 inches wide. It's about like this. About that wide. Y'all getting this? Come on. That shield was covered with leather and with canvas. And it was bound together. And let me tell you, not only that, that shield, before they would go into the battle, they would douse it with some water. Whoa! They'd soak that thing in water. That thing is already about 22 pounds before they put the water on it. So you imagine somebody standing there with 22 pounds for maybe hours at a time ready for the enemy to come and attack. But yet they're still standing there holding firm and holding strong. Let me tell you this morning, this evening, church, glory to God. It's when we get tired of holding that and we drop it down. That's when the enemy is going to attack you tonight. That's when we're going to have problems. That's when we're going to get destroyed tonight. It's whenever we let it down. There's, oh, hallelujah. There's too many people that's going around throwing it down anymore. Hallelujah. I'm glad tonight that God gives us the strength to carry on anyhow. I'm just going to carry on anyhow, brother. I'm going to keep on going on for God. Hallelujah. Woo. Two pieces of wood glued together, yeah. holding it all together. That, Ro that Roman shield that was holding up there for those long battles that was to come. Oh, they were had to be strong. Church, tonight, can I tell you that tonight you got to be strong. Amen. you got to be strong in the Lord. If you look... As they was holding this up, the Romans, what they would do was they would start lining up. Come on. Boys, I'm going to use you for it tonight. Come on up here. Come on, let's stand up. Come on. We're going to stand in formation tonight. Come on, brothers. Let me move this back out of the way. Let me just kick that out of here. Come on. Oh, this is a pretty good wall right here. Isn't it? Man, put your arms together like this. We still ain't got room. The Roman soldiers in the phalanx position would hold their position just like this. And a shield, imagine a shield from here and down to about right here. And that they were holding. Glory, hallelujah. They were kicked down. They had the ball, hallelujah. They had their shoes that was shot, that was stuck in. And they were holding that position one by one. And they went along building a wall up. Lord God, let me tell you, if you build a wall like that, the devil ain't going to get through to you.
we stand together and as we stand together in faith of Jesus Christ we'll have the victory we'll have the victory brother where's brother Phil there he is he taught this morning out of 1 John chapter 5 I'm going to hit it again verse 4 he said for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world and this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith church we're going to go on we're going to have to have faith if we're going to win the victory we're going to have to have faith come on brother I love you brother here Hallelujah. Thank God for faith. Amen. Amen. Look at uh, verse number 17. The Bible says, And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. You know, I got to thinking about the helmet of salvation and how it's a piece of armor that we have to put on and that we have to wear. You know, you think about football players and um, sports players and people riding motorcycles and they don't want to get caught without their helmet. Why? Because they can, a man, experience a serious injury. They can experience dead without it. You think about the warriors that went out in the Roman army. They had a, a metal helmet on that would protect them from a, a blow from a sword. And they would, it would protect them from rocks and spears and darts and such things. But they never ever went out to battle without their helmet on. Hallelujah. Now this helmet that I'm talking about uh, this evening hallelujah it is not made of brass it is not made hallelujah of metal but it is made of hope hallelujah first thessalonians says but let us who are of the day be sober putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for an helmet the hope of salvation i don't know about you but I am so glad uh, this evening that my hope uh, is not in this world. My hope uh, is not in the government. My hope uh, is not in another man. But my hope uh, is in the finished work. Amen of Jesus Christ. Now what you might ask, what in the world does it protect us from? But it protects us against doubt of the Savior's love. Listen to what Romans says. And hope maketh not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet perish adventure for a good man. Some should even dare to die. But God commendeth His love towards us that while we were yet sinners He died for us. Let me tell you this evening. It doesn't matter how lost you were. It doesn't matter what your past looks like. But we serve a God that while we were yet sinners, while we were yet enemies, He died on Calvary for you and I. This is a helmet. Praise the God of heaven that was bought and paid for. Amen. Over 2,000 years ago. Amen. So this helmet, when the devil comes at you and he tries to tell you that you're not saved, but when people come to you and they want to judge you and ridicule you for being in the trial of your lifetime, you can take that helmet and you can put it on and you can say, get behind me, Satan, for thus saith the word of God, amen, that, it, that he died, hallelujah, for you, and he died for me. I serve 
whatsoever, whosoever come to God tonight. Amen. It doesn't matter who you are. Jesus loves you. Hallelujah. Amen. But we can go on. And the Bible tells us, amen, about this helmet. What else, brother, does it protect you from? It protects you from a double mind. Amen. Knowing that the Lord, you shall receive the reward of the inheritance. For ye served the Lord Christ. Knowing, listen to that word, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive a reward. Lord. Amen. I've got to know so a salvation you can have. A no so salvation when I put on that helmet and the devil comes to me and he says you ain't saved. You ain't no good. You ain't called to preach. You don't deserve this. You'll never be anything. Amen. I can look back. Hallelujah! And have a no so kind of salvation. Hallelujah! Amen. But we go on and we look. Amen. The Bible also begins to tell us in Psalm 42, Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise Him who is the hell of my countenance and my God. Amen. I can put that helmet on and it protects me from a disquieted soul. I'm so glad. Hallelujah. When stress and anxiety and the cares of life, they begin to wrap around in my mind. I can put on that helmet of salvation. Amen. Listen to what I say. It says that will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. Trust ye in the Lord forever for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. Hallelujah. Amen. When the troubles of life, they begin to surround you and your loved one's health has been stricken from hell and you've got, amen, kids and family members that are suicidal and you've got a broken home that you just wish God would put back together. Amen, you've got lost loved ones and the devil tells you they'll never get Get saved. I can put on that helmet of salvation that was bought with a price, and I can speak to my own soul. Hallelujah. And say, Well, soul, why art thou disquieting in me? Don't you know who my Jesus is? Don't you know that he loves me? Don't you know that he saved me? Don't you know that he picked me up? That the Lord prayed to set my feet on a solid rock. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, we go through the troubles and trials and we face things on this side of life. Hallelujah. Amen. But I'll tell you this tonight. But we won't always have to fight. Amen. There's coming the day. Hallelujah. When we'll take off this helmet of salvation. Praise the God of heaven. And we'll trade it for a crown. I'm so glad that I'm just a pilgrim in a strange land. I'm so glad that my Redeemer lives. Amen. And I'm so glad. Amen. That He who endureth till the end, the same shall be saved. But I've got a warning of this evening. If you don't have that helmet, 
it. Amen. The Bible teaches us. Amen. Whosoever's name is not written in the Lamb's book of life will be cast into the lake of fire. So this helmet, it transcends all of eternity. If you don't have it on today, you won't have the peace. You won't have the joy. You won't have the love. But if you never pick that helmet up, amen, hallelujah, one day you'll stand before a holy God. And the, amen, the wheat and the tares and the sheep and the goats, it'll all be divided. But I'm so glad that God, amen, has made a way of an escape. And if you want that helmet, God will give it to you. of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm glad for the honor of God that still works tonight in 2021. Everybody looking for something new. I'm telling you, what we're preaching tonight, what's been preached this morning, has stood the test of time. It'll stand, hallelujah, when the world's on fire. Want to preach just a few moments tonight about the sword. Amen. Thank God tonight for all the parts of the armor that is a defensive weapon. And can I tell you tonight, honey, if there's ever a time that we're in battle, it's in today's time. We're living in a time like none of us has ever seen. And the devil's running to and fro, happy and pleased of what's going on in the world around us. We ought not be stirred about it. The Bible tells us things are going to wax worse and worse. But aren't you going glad tonight that God has enabled you tonight, has given us something, bless God, that we can stand and fight the devil, praise God, amen, a lot of people's trying to change the sword, amen, brother Gary, they're wanting a new sword, bless God, I like the one that's already been tried by fire, amen, can I tell you, take just a few moments. That soldier, bless God, that Roman soldier, he would be girded up with his shoes. Hey Amen. With his belt, with his breastplate, he'd have his armor, he'd have that shield, he'd have his helmet. Sometimes you can look down through history and have all mannerisms of weaponry, but no matter what he had, whether it be a ball, a shaped in spikes, or whether it be a spear, it didn't matter if he had an axe. That soldier would not go into battle if he didn't have his sword. And I tell you tonight, the reason the church is suffering defeat, we turned away from the sword of the man of God. Hey, man. Can I tell you tonight? Hey, man. There's power in that sword. Yes, sir. I'm glad the Bible says, for the Word of God in Hebrews 4 12, the Word of God is quick. Yes, sir. It's true. It's genuine. Brother Mark preached about truth. You want truth? Right here from cabin to cabin, bless God, is true. It's quick and it's powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit. And to the joints and mar. I like this part right here. It's a get down in your tater patch. Praise God. Amen. And it's a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. The reason a lot of the world that's sitting in church houses today ain't got power with God. They put on a good act. They put on a good front. But their heart's filled with evil. Their hearts, their thoughts ain't on the Lord anymore. We need the 
sword. There's old time power. Wonder working power. Amen. In the sword. Hey, Lord. The problem today, our young people are growing up in America. They don't realize, amen, that there's power in Jesus. His mama and daddy have let dust get all over their sword. They packed it up and put it in a drawer. Thank God we need to get them out. Let Junior and Sissy know there's something about this old book. Can I tell you, there's nothing that compares to it. Amen. 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 Ain't nothing in this world compares to that. There ain't nothing in this world that can make the statement to condemn it. I don't care what the world says. This is true. God's Word said, let God be true and every man alive. This is truth from cover to cover. I've heard them say, well, there's contradictions. It may be in the junk you're reading, but in what I've got in my hand tonight, every jot and every tittle, glory to God, has been inspired by the Holy Ghost. Nothing can condemn it. Thank God nothing will conquer it. You want to win the battle you're fighting tonight? You better strap on the sword. You better know how to use it. You better study that weapon you've got in your hand. Because I rest assured tonight, the devil knows that sword. He's been wounded. Hell out time. He's been wounded by that sword. What you can do doesn't scare him. Glory. But when I pull this out, every demon of hell shudders tonight. Lord, y'all killing me. Old man can't preach like that much anymore. The purpose, we see the power of the sword. We see the purpose of the sword. That book right there, the Word of God, it's the sword. It's to empower the saints. He didn't leave you defenseless. He gave you everything to protect yourself. But He gave you something to fight with. He don't want you standing there just getting knocked all over the place. And I was a young man, about 14 year old. They were some neighborhood boys one day and I was raised, I'm just no hillbilly. Raised in the country. My daddy was a preacher. And they wanted one of them wanted to fight. And I was scared to fight, preacher. I wasn't scared of the boy, I was scared of daddy. Yeah, come on. Daddy still believed in woodside religion, amen. The old woodshed did good. It still do it once in a while if we use it. That didn't cost you nothing. I went in, my lip busted and bleeding. I'll never forget what my daddy said. I thought he was going to be happy because I chose not to fight. He said, son, sit in that chair right yonder. He said, I've always told you never to start a fight. He said, never start one. But he said, the next time you walk in this house beat up and battered, and you've not raised your hands to defend yourself, you're going to get the worst whooping from your daddy ever was. And I tell you why a lot of Christians ain't got the victory tonight. They've laid the sword down. They've let the devil whoop them up one side and the other. I wouldn't go and have somebody grab their sword tonight. It's to empower the saints. But it's also to emprise the saints. You say, preacher, what's that mean? It means it makes us have an adventurous or a daring or a civic experience. Preacher, I'd get saved, but them, uh, them Christians are boring. They ain't got a hold of what I got a hold of. <laughs> this sword, there's a purpose. It's to emprise you and I. It's to give us 
some excitement in our life. Bless God, we'll stand on Sunday and sing. On wings of a snow white dove. We'll sing it and mully grub around. Half of us ain't fit to ride the buzzer to a gut pile. I'm a telling you, we ought to have some joy. We ought to be in prize. When the Holy Ghost of God. I want to go out to my God's children. Wouldn't get excited about what Jesus has done for us. Not only that, but it's to emphasize the saints. That word emphasize. To accentuate. To feature. To highlight. And to illuminate the saints' abilities. Can I tell you, I'm looking at winners tonight. If you'll grab that book in your hand... God's illuminating light of the glory of God will shine abroad in your life. Hey man, I've been told when I was a junior high schooler, I was dumb, ignorant, never be anything. I'm still nothing tonight. Why well, I am what I am by the grace of God. But I tell you what I am. I'm blood born, born again, sanctified, filled with the Spirit of God, called according to His purpose. Let me say this real quick and I'll close. Get ready, sonny. We see the power and the purpose, but we see the pursuit of the sword. David said in Psalms 119, thy word. Not my word. Devil ain't scared of my word. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee we need to pursue it any time any place and in any situation it is the only thing that is going to get us to the glory world it is the only thing that will enable us to fight the good fight of faith in this world below but aren't you glad God said, I've got a reserved under fire. John said, I, John, saw a new heaven and a new earth coming down. Hallelujah. You might not get plugged in over that, but it's running 220 from my head to my feet tonight. Hallelujah. We've got a better place for coming. Well, praise His name. I tell you what, I don't... You men can just keep on preaching. I'm all right. I'm all right. There's a story of a pastor. He'd always come up to the pulpit to get ready for church to start. Choir be singing, people be singing, doing all these things, and that preacher would be sitting over here on the stage. He'd be down the seat. And he'd be sitting there and he'd be praying because he had never taken any time to get in the Word of God all week to prepare for a sermon. And he'd be, pre he'd be praying the whole time. He'd say, Lord, please give me a message. Lord, please give me a message. Lord, please give me a message. They'd be doing the announcements. He'd be under his breath. Lord, give me a message. They'd do the special singing. He's down there. He's in that seat. He's under his breath. Lord, give me a message. Every Sunday, God would give him something, give him something where he could get out there and preach a little bit. One Sunday, that preacher was still doing the same thing. God began to speak to that preacher real clearly while he was sitting there on that stage. And God told him, he said, Son, he said, I have a specific message for you today. That preacher heard God. He thought, wonderful, wonderful. And he looks over and he in his spirit he says what is it God what's the message you want me to hear and God looks at him and says you're lazy come on yeah 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 you know, like this pastor, God has fully equipped all of us to live victoriously. But can I tell you this? If we don't know how to use what God has given us, what good is it? 
You have heard seven anointed men of God powerfully preach on the various components of God's wardrobe for the Christian. And in totality, the armor of God provides the Christian with everything that is needed to conquer the devil, to conquer the world system, to conquer the flesh, to conquer the corrupt mind, and all these other things except the Bible in this text does not tell us one thing and that one thing is the knowledge of how to use it. We can preach on you need to have a helmet and you need to have a sword and you need to have a shield and you need to have shoes and you need to have all these things and I'll be honest with you, I'd be afraid to give some of you guys a sword because I promise if you're like me and we had to go fight with it, we wouldn't know what to do with it. We wouldn't know how to swing it. We wouldn't know how to hold it. We wouldn't know what to do. We don't even know how to sharpen it hardly. And see, the Bible gives us all these different components of the armor and we say praise God for the wardrobe but the fact of the matter is it takes something else if we're going to know how to use it. And that something else is found in verse number 18. The Bible says in Ephesians 6 and verse number 18, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And I'm going to add these two verses at the end just because I want to tie these in. And that for me, that utterance may be given to me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the Gospel for which I I am an ambassador in bonds that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. The one thing that God tells us that instructs us and shows us how to use what He's given us is when we stay in God in prayer. Without a prayer life, without a dedicated, devoted prayer life. This means nothing. It is no good unless we are prayers. It is no good unless we are prayer warriors. It is no good unless we have a prayer closet. You can't even get saved unless you pray. For the Bible says with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You can't even know the Word of God. For the Bible says the carnal man cannot know the things of God because they are spiritually discerned. You have to be in God all the time in prayer or you won't even be able to understand the sword you picked up. How many times have we heard people take this book out of context? We've turned them to, had them preach it to mean just about anything and everything they wanted to mean. We were talking about it the other day about a preacher that was preaching about Isaiah chapter 6. And he was talking about how the train of his robe filled the temple. And he began to preach on what it was to have that great choo-choo train go through the temple. I thought, man alive! We've got so many folks that God has given us so much and we have no idea how to use it. I want to show you why tonight prayer is so important because number one, we are prepared through prayer. We are prepared through prayer. Can I tell you that if any man goes into the military, he's got to go to basic training first. He's got to make sure that he, earn, he learns how to use a weapon. He learns how to run equipment. He learns how to defend himself. He learns how to go. He knows who he's a part of. He knows who he's with. There is no doubt. When he gets done and they graduate him, he knows exactly how how to fire that gun. He knows. He knows the tactics of his army. He knows all those things because he spent time with the commander and he got prepared. Now you say, well, where's that at in the Scripture, preacher? I'll give you an example. The Bible 
Bible says when David goes out to the battlefield because he's taking supplies to his brothers who's fighting in the army of Israel and this big Philistine giant Goliath is coming out every day taunting Israel saying send somebody out here to fight me. They were scared to death. Nobody would do it. Little old David rises up and said what in the world's going to happen to this guy? And he says I'll go fight him. Saul says come on into my tent. David had never met Saul at this point. This is the first encounter David has with Saul. Saul looks over at David says you're just a youth. No way you can fight this big giant. He said but you know what? If you're intent on going out and fight him here let me give you my armor. Gives him his armor. No doubt had a helmet. No doubt had a breastplate. No doubt had a belt. No doubt had shoes. No doubt had a shield. No doubt had a sword. And David said I can't go out here with this stuff because I don't know how to use it. He said, it's not been proven yet. I don't wear armor, he says. He said, but there's one thing I do know how to use. I know how to use a slingshot. He said, I think I'll just go out to the river and pick me up some stones. And I'll use that. Why? Somebody taught him, prepared him how to use a slingshot. Because the Bible said one day there was a bear that came by and David slew the bear. One day there was a lion that came by and David slew the lion. God used those two animals to prepare David for this victory. But he knew he couldn't do it unless he was prepared. And no matter how great all of these pieces of armor are, and no matter how wonderful these guys preach it up, unless you and I are intimate in our relationship with God, it will do us no good. We are prepared through prayer. Secondly, we are positioned through prayer. Notice this text here because we need to understand what we see here in verse 18. Praying always with all prayer. And you say, well, preacher, what else would I pray with but all prayer? I mean, do you pray with something else besides prayer? You do. Verse number 18, the Bible says you also pray with supplication. Supplication is a little bit different than prayer. Prayer, prayer is a general overall umbrella. All right? You can pray for anything and everything, can't you? I mean, come on now. I mean, a lot of us pray it won't rain so we can go have a good time at the park. You know? A lot of us pray that the preacher won't go longer after the bell rings. All right? By the way, if you've been praying that, I want you to know these guys hooked me up tonight. I got some five-hour energy. Look at that. Ten minutes, man. Fooey on that. Listen. Listen. But supplications... Praying with all prayer and supplication. Supplications are a specific thing. A specific issue. A specific need. It takes something and narrows it right down to the point. Can I tell you it's great to be in the army of God. It is great to have the armor of God. It is great to know how to use it. But listen, when I go in prayer with God, God begins to pinpoint exactly where I need to fight. He pinpoints exactly where to go to the battle. Some things I shouldn't be involved in. Some things I need to get right in the middle of. And when I pray to God, the Spirit of God works in me and guides me to where I need to be. Prayer. Prayer does that. We are positioned through prayer. Listen, we're not only positioned through prayer and prepared through prayer, but lastly, the Bible says we are powered through prayer. We are powered through prayer. Here's what I mean by this. Prayer has the power to keep you alert. The Bible says in verse 18, watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. The word perseverance literally means lying sleepless. All right? I did that last night. I did. I lied sleepless last night. 
I was in the room with a bear last night, bless God. <laughs> that thing snored, I tell you what. I even took a sleeping pill and couldn't sleep last night. <laughs> But prayer keeps us alert. I prayed all night I wouldn't kill that thing, all right? Listen. <laughs> but listen, we need to be alert because the Bible says this. But this know, listen to this. But this know that if the goodman of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have been watched and not suffered his house to be broken up. We can't afford not to be alert. We can't afford not to pray. We can't afford to be silent with God. So prayer keeps us alert. Prayer keeps us active. Verse 19, Paul says, I'm praying for all the saints and I'm wearing this armor and I'm doing all this so that way utterance may give, be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. I'm not wearing this armor so I can be put up in a museum and somebody look and say, what a good looking knight that is. I am putting on this armor and I am praying so that God will become active in my life and I will become active in the kingdom of God. And if God has called you to preach, you need to get up and you need to go preach. If God has called you to teach, you need to get up and teach. But God has called us all to service and we are to serve. God makes us active. My son answered the call to preach some years ago, about 2016 I think it was, Brother Andy. He's been pastoring for three years now. And I remember him coming up to me and saying, Dad, God has called me to preach. And I said, son, one thing I told him, I said, son, I said, listen, if God's called you to preach, I said, you'll have something to say. And I said, if you've got something to say, you won't wait around until somebody provides you a pulpit to say it in. I said, you'll find a nursing home to say it in. You'll find a jail somewhere to say it in. You'll go down to the park somewhere. You'll go door knocking in the community. You'll find somebody to say it to. If God has called you to preach, don't sit around waiting for somebody to invite you. Get up! Get up! You've got the armor of God! Get up! Get up! Prayer will keep you active. And lastly, prayer. This is what I like. Prayer keeps us advancing. Prayer keeps us advancing. Paul said, verse 20, I'm an ambassador in bond. Now that word ambassador means he is a direct representative of the king. He speaks with the authority of the king. Let me tell you about ambassadors. They get assigned to go places. We have an ambassador to China. Don't think they do very well, but we have an ambassador to China. We have an ambassador in Israel. We have an ambassador in all these different places. They are sent out and they are to speak and to advocate with the authority of the king. And they are to go into the places that we assign them to as a country. And they are to advance our nation's interests in those foreign lands. We are an ambassador with Christ. We have been given an assignment of the king. And that assignment let me just say something that ought not to flip our wigs but I think it scares a lot of us to death he has not made us ambassadors to stay in here he did not make us an ambassador this is good this is good but this is only the beginning this is where it starts but God has made you an ambassador to get out of this place and go out of this community and represent your team and advance his interests. And prayer puts all of that men together. Tonight, Pastor Andy, I didn't get any permission from him to do this. He'll probably never invite me back, but that's all right. I got my five hour energy, okay? Pastor, come over here a second. Man, I tell you what, we also had a great message last night, didn't we? Absolutely. Pastor Gary, I want you to come up here, Brother Andy, would you? Pastor Gary Norton preached to us last night. And this is Brother Andy's pastor. He's invested in him. Brother Derek, come over here a second. Brother Derek, he's invested 
somebody invested in him, he's investing in your kids right now, amongst other things, I'm sure. Listen, listen, Brother Derek, these men, I've already instructed these men to do something for me tonight. Nobody knew it, but I've instructed these guys at the front doors to do something for me tonight. How many kids you got in here tonight that's in your group? Y'all stand here at Derek's group. All Derek's youth group here. Young adult group or whoever he oversees as this youth pastor and associate pastor. Stay right there. Don't go nowhere. All right, guys. Raise your hands if you're in public school. Raise your hands in public school. Anybody in private school here? Anybody? All right. Listen. You and I have a mandate by the king to leave this place and go into where God sends us and to advocate the interests of our King. God has placed you in those places you're at. And Brother Derek, I want you to walk out your men and your women out these doors and you're going to meet us outside in this parking lot. These kids are going to go out of this place and tomorrow at their schools and their jobs and everywhere else, they are going to advance the interests of our King. Come on, preacher, lead them. Lead them. Lead them. Come on. Now, I heard of another group here today. They might have fed us. I ain't really sure. But if they did, they were good. I'm telling you. Whoever fed us, praise, your, praise the glory of the Lord. All right? Listen, I've also heard there's a group here tonight called Sisters of Grace. Is that right? How many ladies tonight would you stand here in Sisters of Grace? Where are they at? Who's the, who's the leader of these Sisters of Grace? Right here. Sister, take your ladies out of this place. We ain't grace just for this building. We are grace for this community. Come on, ladies. Let's get out of here and let's go advance the interests of our king. Come on. I asked Brother Andy here tonight if he had a seniors group or anything. He said, we're getting ready. It's starting. I don't know who's in charge of that. But I'll tell you what, everybody else staying here tonight, come on, stand with us. We're getting out of this place. This service is over. Listen, we've done all we can do in this place tonight. Now I want these men of God to come right down here with us because there's three of them right here. This man right here. This man right here. And this man right here is going to the mid-Atlantic area. Maryland, Pennsylvania. And they are going to advance the interests of their king. Men, let's go out. Come on, let's go to the parking lot. This guy's going to King Sport, Tennessee to advance the interest of his king. This guy's going to Irwin, Tennessee to advance the interests of his king. Oh, let me tell you something. Y'all may not know this, but my daughter and her boyfriend drove all the way from Welch College to be in this service here tonight. They are here. You guys go out of there with them tonight. You guys are going back to that college. You're going back to Nashville. You're going to say, you are going to advance the interests of our king. Listen, friends, if you ain't interested in spreading Jesus, listen, you just go ahead and stay seated. But tonight we are ambassadors for Jesus Christ. And this is where it begins. Pastors, let's lead these folks. Lead your folks out of here tonight. And we are going to end this thing outside where the grace is going to go. 